After 36 years in the force, Police Chief Harold Rossman announced his retirement and the community came out for a goodbye party. The Chamber of Commerce teamed up with the DDA to celebrate Small Business Week in downtown Lagorian. 200 walkers came together for the 33rd annual walk for a warmth event at Canterbury Village. And mail carriers across the country collected donations left at mailboxes during the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Although he's only held the title of police chief since 2020, Harold Rossman has left an indelible mark on the Lake Orion community. After 36 years of service, Rossman announced his retirement. On the evening of Thursday, April 27th, friends, family and colleagues gathered at 313 Pizza Bar in downtown Lake Orion to celebrate the career of outgoing police chief Harold Rossman. Rossman began his career with the police department in 1987 as a reserve officer. He attended the police academy in 1992 and went full time in 1995. He was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 2001, then stepped in as police chief when former chief Jerry Narsh retired. Rossman is a Lake Orion native and has seen the community develop and grow. I was born and raised here. Uh, matter of fact, my parents, uh, when I was born, grew, I had a house on Silver Bell Road at Guineas and across the street was an airport, believe it or not, where the GM plant is. Um, then we, uh, when I was two, uh, they moved over to Pine Tree and that's where I was uh, raised. Um, I went to Orion schools, went to Weber Elementary and went to Pine Tree Elementary and went to Junior High West, which is now the Walden Middle School. And then I went to where the Cirque building is, that was our high school and, I, and graduated in 1982. I'll tell you what, I, he was my partner for 19 years, right? So we work together as a team, and when you do that, you get to know someone really well. And the one thing I knew when I left in 2019 and he picked up that baton is that this village, this community, this police department was in the right hands. Um, Chief Harold Rossman defined ethics. He defined honesty. Um, those are the things behind a badge that you want in this day and age, right? And that's the man that he is, and that's the policing that he made sure was throughout this village and throughout the department. So, um, but like anything, every I've, I've heard this from a lot of people uh, in this business that you'll know when it's time. And uh, he called me a couple of months ago, and uh, it, the, the call kind of was that way. I answered the phone, and it was a kind of a pause and then a sigh, and he said, it's time. I've got to go. It's time. I know it's time to go. So I respect that. Um, as a village, uh, we're going to miss him. Um, the beautiful thing is the department has his fingerprints all over it. Um, he's brought those ethics, those talents, uh, that care and concern, uh, and woven that into the mind and heart of every officer uh, that worked for him. So um, it's uh, we're in a good spot and, and because of his service. 36 years. Rossman's last day was Monday, May 1st, with Lieutenant Todd Stanfield stepping in as interim police chief. He talked about how visible the police chief was in the community. He was at everything, kids and cops, and you know, the parades, walking around, making sure everything was safe and everything's squared away. So everybody's, all the officers knew where they should be. You know, the citizens love him, you know. He walks in, sometimes he walks on the stair, the store, the streets here, he walks right into the store and just says hi. You know, and they're like, wow, that's the chief coming in here to say hi. or he does traffic stops, you know, some days, you know, he's got a few extra hours on his hands, it's free, he'll go run radar, you know, or do some traffic stops. And they're like, people are just shocked that the chief of police pulled me over, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it, it's just good to be out there to be seen. This way you know what your community wants and needs, you know, because you're seeing it firsthand, not from behind the desk. Any final words to the people like Orion? Just that, um, uh, again, I'm proud to be able to serve you. Um, I love all the residents here, the business people, and I thank everyone from Village Council to former Chief Jerry Narsh to the citizens um, that have backed me through the years, supported me through the years. Um, I am never going to forget my hometown of Lake Orion, um, 
again, I love everybody here, and God bless everybody. It's again, you you, you made my dream come true. Um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a police officer, and you know what? I was a police officer, and, and then made it to lieutenant, and then to chief, and I never thought that would ever happen. I just wanted to be just a cop. <laughs> and uh, but no, I thank everybody for their support, their love. Lieutenant Todd Stanfill will act as interim chief until Village Council makes a decision on a permanent replacement. Until then, we here at ONTV want to wish the outgoing police chief the best of luck in his future endeavors. Oakland Livingston Human Service Agency was formed in 1964 as part of President Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty. Oakland and Livingston County residents facing financial hardships can turn to the organization for assistance. On the morning of Saturday, May 6th, approximately 200 walkers gathered on the grounds of Canterbury Village for the 33rd Walk for Warmth fundraiser hosted by the Oakland Livingston Human Service Agency. Uh, the Walk for Warmth is our annual fundraiser to raise funds for heat-related, energy-related emergencies in homes. So we help people pay utility bills, solve, you know, furnace issues and other heat-related emergencies that they might have through the funds that we raise here. Those taking part in the event walk the grounds of Canterbury Village, which happened to be hosting their Flower and Home Improvement Expo at the same time. Money was raised through pledges, donations, sponsors, and a 50-50 raffle. Well, first, thank you to everyone who's come out to support us. If you can't make it here today, please go to our website and you can help us by clicking on our Donate uh, button and donating to this cause at www.olhsa.org. How does someone take advantage of your services if they find themselves in a financial crisis? Sure, you can go to that same website, www.olhsa.org, or you can call our main number, 248-209-2600, uh, and uh, one of our staff will be happy to help you and point you in the right direction and get you the help that you need. On the morning of Thursday, May 4th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce teamed up with the Lake Orion DDA to celebrate Small Business Week. Things kicked off at 20 Front Street, where business leaders and dignitaries gathered for introductions. Then the group split up into two teams as they visited the businesses that populate downtown Lake Orion. Today we are celebrating small business in downtown Lake Orion. So the Chamber and the Downtown Development Authority teamed up to do a small business walk. Our aim today is to visit about 60 businesses and just walking in with a sweet treat to say thank you for keeping your doors open and servicing our community. It's small business day every day for me, <laughs> absolutely. That's the focus and the passion um, that I have and, um, and that Joyce from the Chamber has as well. We both um, are passionate about supporting our small businesses. For more than 50 years, the U.S. Small Business Administration has celebrated Small Business Week, which ran from April 30th through May 6th. The Chamber and DDA teamed up to not only express their appreciation of Lake Orion small businesses, but to encourage residents to support them by shopping local. For every hundred dollars that is spent in a local store, 68 dollars of it comes back to the community through payroll, through taxes, through sponsorship, and through expenditures. So it's a big deal. I mean, we at the, definitely, small businesses are the foundation of the local economy. The partnership between the Downtown Development Authority and the Orionary Chamber is extremely important. We want to show that both organizations show strong support and help for, and assistance for the small business community in downtown and in Orion Township. So today we had legislative reps from our Senator's offices, our Congress offices, Orion Township and the village um, of Lake Orion to walk with us, our chamber ambassadors, our board members, as well as the DDA uh, board members. And so we had big teams and again, we just had such a great time on this glorious day. And now we're gonna take a tour of the downtown area on the trolley. For many Oakland County families, several factors, including inflation, have contributed to a rising need for food assistance. With increasing demand, the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry is facing challenges in trying to keep their shelves stocked. Luckily, the community always steps up to help out. 
On the morning of Thursday, May 4th, representatives of VFW Post 334 returned to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry to present them with a check for $1,200. The amount covers the cost of keeping the chunky soup shelf stocked for one year. Well, their need is, is uh, they uh, sent us a little letter and called us and see if we could help with another shelf, adopt a shelf. So uh, we talked to our members and we took on that challenge again this year. Uh, the need is the most important thing, you know, the community itself. Uh, I guess uh, with the COVID, uh, they, everybody was getting a little extra money couple hundred dollars or something that was taken away so when things like that are taken away that's a lot of food that's a lot of money to buy food and so this is the next best thing that we can do is when they need the help we come running you know we always need help we never say no <laughs> we never say no so this is a true blessing for us and the soup chunky soup is a need because families can make that a meal or add it to like pasta or rice and really have a more nutritious meal so we go through that in large quantities so this will be a huge benefit for us this is the second time the vfw has presented a check to the food pantry in 2023 Back in February, they made their annual donation to adopt the pasta shelf for one year. Fundraisers like their annual poppy sale allow the VFW to help those in need in the community. Uh, we'd also like to mention that uh, like everybody to kind of do what we do is adopt a shelf here. To, if you, you've got the wherewithal, you know, it, it, I know it's a little bit of money, but it's well worth uh, uh, supporting the community and those that are kind of down and out, you know, they need the help. so. It's, it's a positive thing and it, it'll bring, you know, a little glow to your heart to understand that you're helping people that are in need, you know. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we are so grateful and we, we are just so <laughs> wonderful because you're right in our, right around the corner from us. So, and you know, and we have veterans who shop here at times. So it, it, it's just a wonderful community support. We appreciate it. The first Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive was held in 10 cities in October of 1991. Food banks suggested the drive be moved to the spring when Thanksgiving and Christmas food donations began to run out. In May of 1993, the drive was expanded to all 50 states with more than 11 million pounds of food collected on that day. The drive has since surpassed 1 billion pounds of food donations. On Saturday, May 13th, the Lake Orient Post Office took part in the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. Postal customers were asked to leave bags of non-perishable food at their mailbox, where letter carriers would collect them and bring them back to the post office. Representatives of the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry were on hand to transfer the donations into a trailer that delivered them to the food pantry. It gives us a huge, um, I guess, shot in the arm. We'll get probably between anywhere between 25,000 and 40,000 pounds of food uh, this weekend and currently we're using uh, going through about 20,000 pounds of food a month so basically that will give us a, a couple months worth of food just in this food drive alone so it's it, it's a big help. Most of us feel that it's uh, a little extra work but the benefit of it it fills our heart with happiness and we don't mind doing it at all so you know we we sometimes get a little disappointed that we don't pick up enough but um, when we pick up a lot, it, it really brings us joy. The drive was put on hold in 2020 and 2021 in response to the COVID pandemic. It returned in 2022. Due to increasing demand resulting in depleted shelves, the food drive could not come at a better time. In anticipation of the food drive, we typically draw down our, our inventory a little bit intentionally so that we've got enough room to accommodate the additional food. Um, but we can, we can always use food donations, uh, you know, throughout the year, usually through the summertime, uh, the fall, donations, food do not, donations usually start to fall off. So this gives us, uh, you know, the, through this food drive, that kind of gets us up until, uh, through July into August before we, we start getting low on inventory again. Everybody falls behind sometimes and they need help and um, if you can help then you should and I think it's important to help mankind and um, you know it's coming into summer and kids don't have you know hot lunch sometimes they may not have lunch at 
at home, so it's important to, to make sure that we feed our communities. If you or someone you know could benefit from the services the food pantry offers, you can call 248-628-3933 or visit OxfordOrientFish.org. Mother's Day fell on Sunday, May 14th, and the staff at Orient Township Parks and Rec hosted several events to help all the moms out there feel special. On Saturday, May 6th, Orient Township Parks and Rec hosted its third annual Mother's Day Market at the Orient Center. 30 vendors occupy two floors on the Orient Center, including the Orient Room and Front Lobby. Parking and admissions was free to the public. It does get bigger every year. Uh, we get a better audience every single year. We get uh, new and different vendors every single time. So what we have going on today is our mother, Mother's Day Market. And what it is is um, I'm very supportive of local artists and um, small local businesses, so I really enjoy getting those vendors out, giving them a, um, a way to market their goods so that they can make some money and sell some stuff. Originating as the Made in the Mitten craft show, it evolved into a Mother's Day themed event in 2021. And like its predecessor, the event requires vendors to offer locally made products. Everything here is made locally. Uh, this event did spring off of that one. We started the one uh, made in the mitten in October, and that is the um, national buy nearby campaign. That's how that that event started. Uh, that event is so so successful. We had such a huge demand that we copied it and brought it closer to Mother's Day, so people have an opportunity to buy items that are made locally for Mother's Day. A few days later, the township hosted a brand new event that offered valuable information to new moms and moms-to-be. On Thursday, May 11th, Orient Township Parks and Recreation hosted their first ever Motherhood Matters Safety Seminar and Vendor Expo at the Orient Center. Things kicked off with presentations by several experts in the medical field who touched on topics like breastfeeding, car seats, and choking response. Then attendees were encouraged to visit the 20 vendors who provided all sorts of valuable information. Of course, it was no coincidence the event took place just a few days before Mother's Day. Uh, we thought it would be a great opportunity to pull in those moms or those moms-to-be and then also give them some free stuff for being a mom. So we have free massages, free pizza, free donuts, free coffee, um, water, goodies from Trader Joe's. So just an opportunity to give some free stuff too. Orion Township partnered with Ascension Providence of Rochester to host the event. Sponsors like G's Pizza, Tim Hortons, and Heartfelt Impressions, who provided childcare, helped make this event free to the public. It's a huge community effort. Um, very thankful for everybody who came up to be a vendor here. We couldn't have had this great turnout without them. Um, and you, I mean, all sorts of like Orion businesses, but also. Uh, Clarkston and Rochester as well, so a huge community-wide event. It's awesome to see. Based on the success of this event, organizers are hoping to make this an annual event. The mission statement of Orion Area Youth Assistance is to strengthen youth and families and reduce the incidence of delinquency, neglect, and abuse through community involvement. One way the organization does that is by recognizing students who overcome obstacles, stand up for others, or lead by example. ONTV's Drake Eubanks has more. On the evening of Thursday, May 4th, members of the community gathered at the Orient Center to honor 10 exceptional young people during the Orient Area Youth Assistance Youth Recognition Awards. Now in its 29th year, students ranging from kindergarten to 12th grade are nominated in three different categories, with nominations coming from members of the community. So tonight we are having our annual um, Youth Recognition Awards, and so we are honoring 12 students in the Lake Orient Communities District uh, that are receiving one of three um, awards tonight. So one of the awards that they may be receiving is the Community Ser uh, Service Award. Um, they may be receiving the, um, the Personal Achievement Award, and then we have a new uh, award this, uh, this year called the Good Citizen Award. Among those in attendance were Oakland County deputies and former Lake Orion Police Chief Jerry Narsh, who is now president of the Lake Orion Village Council. With all you kids, and you guys should be celebrated, not just recognized, but celebrated tonight, because you're kind of the best of the best, and you're doing amazing things in your community, and you know what? There are so many forces that would pull you away, right, and make you want to do other things, but you're excelling in your lives and in your school programs, 
and in turn back into your community. For more information or to volunteer your time, you can call 248-693-6878 or visit LakeOrionYouthAssistance.com. At the Orion Center, this is Drake Eubanks reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Drake. Since 2011, the Home Depot Foundation has invested almost $500 million in veterans' causes and improved more than 55,000 veterans' homes and facilities. Here in Lake Orion, the foundation has worked on many projects that help improve the community. On the morning of Wednesday, April 26th, a team of volunteers from the Lake Orion Home Depot gathered at Friendship Park to build six raised garden beds. The garden beds joined 32 garden beds that Orion Township opened to the public in 2014. The current beds that are there are all low to the ground. And um, actually, after personally being out here and renting one of the spaces, um, my mom had a hard time with her artificial needs. And I thought, there's got to be a way that we can get some raised beds so the senior citizens or people in the community that are having the same trouble have the opportunity to come here and garden. The project is the result of a grant that was approved in 2019, but the COVID pandemic postponed construction for several years. Once completed, residents will be able to rent space to plant a garden of their own. Yeah, they can be rented um, every year. So through the Orion Center, it's $25 a plot and it is open to Orion residents. And so yes, anyone can do it. I believe some Boy Scouts even do it to earn badges and then give back, they donate the food. Um, but anybody can rent one and you bring your own items. So you bring your own seeds or plants, you add your own support. So you maintain that, that four by eight space all year. Um, so it's up to you, you know, to produce the, the fruit of your labor, they say, and, uh, and gain some plants. So personally for me, I've even, you know, added things to my soil, new compost and new things to really make it good. At my home, I can't do that, I live in a condo. So that also gives people, for instance, that lives in an apartment or a condo locally that maybe don't have the ability to garden, this gives them that ability. If you know of nonprofit organizations that may be in need of a project, you can call Alana Hart at 248-393-9990, extension 404. Free Comic Book Day was the brainchild of Joe Field, a California-based comic book retailer. The first event took place in 2002 and has been held on the first Saturday of May ever since. Here in Lake Orion, the library got in on the fun with the return of Orion Fandom Fest. ONTV's Joe Johnson was at the event and brings us the story. On Saturday, May 6, families were invited to come out to the Orion Township Public Library for the Orion Fandom Fest, which also happened to be Free Comic Book Day. The event started out as Star Wars Day in 2015 to coincide with May the 4th Be With You, but evolved to include all things pop culture related. Uh, so this is the return of Orion Fandom Fest. It's a celebration of video games, anime, comics, and all kinds of fandoms. What can visitors expect today when they swing by? Oh gosh, we, uh, so today is actually free comic book day as well. Uh, so we have free comics available in the lobby. Um, we've got a variety of different crafts going on uh, for all ages. Um, and then we have a couple of different photo ops and photo booths around the library as well. And as always, uh, we have a huge video game and board game collection and tons of comics and movies and everything like that that you can always check out from the library. Adult Services Librarian Dan Major insists that comic books are a valid way to introduce young people to reading and encourages gamers and comic book lovers to visit the library year-round. We have uh, Teen Tuesdays for any teens that are interested in gaming, comics, anime, anything like that. That's every Tuesday evening. Um, and then, like I said, we have huge collections of things related to kind of every fandom that you can always check out here, too. For more information, you can call 248-693-3000 or visit orionlibrary.org. From the Orion Township Public Library, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. I heard part of the collection, many of it, was your own. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.